Mitchell with Grassroots Church Planting Ministries. Uh, appreciate you listening to these and don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, pass it on to other people if it's speaking to you. So we are driving to go pick up some apples and uh, so we're in the car right now. But I thought we'd do a series on um, rebuilding the walls or, well, we're gonna start with rebuilding the temple, but often in our lives, there are things that happen that need rebuilding. Uh, somebody once said it this way, they said, there can be trouble and challenges in your life for one of two reasons. One, either because you've totally screwed up and made a total mistake, and so you're reaping the consequences. And then other times, just like you're not doing anything seemingly wrong and suddenly just it seems like circumstances have just suddenly happened. So it doesn't matter which one it is, God's intention is the same in either of those circumstances. He wants you to know him, he wants you to grow. And so we're gonna look a bit at Israel's history. Their reasoning that they were uh, in captivity was because they refused, they kept rebelling against God, not following him and walking in relationship with him. So we're gonna look a bit at the process. First we're gonna start off with the temple. Uh, which uh, you can read about in the book of Ezra. And we're also going to reference some things in Zagia, uh, Zechariah and Haggai and the book of Daniel as well. But one of the things that was important to note was that uh, Jeremiah uh, prophesied, first he prophesied and spoke out what was going to happen about destruction was going to happen. And it's interesting how God needed a mouthpiece to speak his work and his will and there's power in words and God used prophets to speak things forth but soon as the judgment was coming he immediately started to prophesy the good things that were going to happen and one of those things that was referenced by several other people later one of them is going to be Daniel we're going to look at that another time um, is he prophesied that in 70 years they would begin to return to the land and the first thing that uh, they said, King Cyrus said, why don't you, anybody who wants to go and rebuild the temple. Now there's different thing, questions of why he would have done that. Some think that uh, maybe he had a revelation from the Jews that were there of God. Um, some have suggested that he did it because um, sometimes when they would conquer a bunch of nations, they would get people, they would try to appease all the gods. So every country or nation. But for whatever reason, his heart was stirred. The Lord used him to put an edict out and to give all back the stuff from the, the temple and to go um, and rebuild it. And so they go and they start the process. And I suppose the one point that I just want to make starting off is that, you know, there may be things in your life that God has spoken uh, prophecy is an awesome thing, but one thing to remember with prophecy, because sometimes people are eager for prophecy. Uh, I've probably been like that at different times in my life, and sometimes you are, you're in a place where you need to hear the word of the Lord. But prophecy often comes to us to help us hold steady and prepare us because of challenges that we're going to face, things that are going to come against us. And I've got prophecies, we've got prophecies that we've written down. And some we've seen, some we haven't seen the answers to, things that we believe in the Lord. And it's important when you get prophetic words to, to go to the Lord. Don't just say, oh, somebody said this, so this is what's going to happen. But it's important that you give it to God. It's got to be something confirming in your own heart. Ultimately, as it's fulfilled, um, you're like, wow, that is awesome. Look what God said he'll do. But so he prophesied ahead to him, give him encouragement, and actually specifically said in 70 years. And there were people that picked up on that and said, hey... Um, the 70 years has come and so they began to look for that to happen so in our lives sometimes we're going through I about, we go through things. sometimes because of our bad choices sometimes because just through things it's important that we hold on to the things that God's spoken to us now those come in different ways sometimes there's something God puts in our hearts sometimes there are words that people speak prophetically to other people uh, through other people. Sometimes it's a scripture that really seems to stand out to us, a message that we hear and you're like, man, I know God was just speaking to me. There's different ways we can get what you'd call like a prophetic word speaking to you. But it's important to hold on to those. And it's interesting that when they prayed, we'll look later at Nehemiah's prayer. When he prayed, he reminded God, same with Daniel, he reminded God of what his words were. 
He reminded God. Was it to remind God because he forgot? No. And sometimes as Christians, we've interpreted that or reinterpreted that where we're like begging God or trying, oh God, did you forget? God didn't forget, but he's stirring something within us. And so when we're reminding God of his promises, we're actually saying, first of all, God, my trust is in you and in your word. It talks about in the New Testament, says that God is not a, a man that lies. You know where that's at? <laughs> it's in Romans, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Romans. It's in Romans. So, um, so that's part of it, holding on and holding on to the scripture. You know, there's a lot of things that are we don't need a prophetic word to get. It's revealed to us in the word, and that's why we need to study the word and read the word. And there are times where we know God's will because it's in His word. There are things that we can hold on to. And um, so it's really important that we do that. And so this was part of the process. There were people who were saying around the seven year point, God, this is what you promised. And it matters to God. God, like a marriage is based on trust and relationship. And so is a relationship with God. And so God is desirous that we would believe him at what he said, that we would trust him. And when we release that faith, things happen that don't happen when we don't. Um, and so, that's how God works because he wants to be in relationship. So it's important that, that we understand when God speaks that we, we hold on to those things. And just because our circumstances don't always look like they're lining up or when they don't line up in some instances, because there could be certain factors, that we don't change our interpretation of scripture. We don't decide, well, I guess that didn't work. Um, God said this, but it doesn't work um, and, and create a new theology. It's important that we look at you know, maybe there were circumstances or things there that stopped that from coming to pass. Um, but anyways, so we're looking at rebuilding and we were recently watching a message by somebody named Jackie Pollinger and reading a little bit of her book. Actually, Rachel, when she was 18 years old, went to Hong Kong and was involved in bringing Bibles into China uh, many, many years ago. And she, uh, did you go to the church? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did go to Jackie Pollinger. She went to Jackie Pollinger's yeah. church. And she's got a couple of books there. We were just recently looking over. So, you know, they, she was in the walled city and really it was about rebuilding broken lives. So what, what are you getting out of as you're reading or we're talking or listening to some messages on YouTube that she's spoken? What do you think about the rebuilding of people's lives? What were things that she did that stand out to you that helped re rebuild other people's lives? Oh, you <laughs> Drive. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> don't look. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, I think she was just really simple in her approach. I think um, she decided that she wasn't going to just. Um, well, she, although she did went went out and she did hand out like leaflets to people, but she felt like that was just so not really Jesus. Jesus wouldn't go around handing out leaflets telling people how much he loved them she said she decided that she needed to show them the love of Jesus and that through that that their lives would be changed and so she yeah so she decided whatever their needs were she was going to seek to meet those needs so if it was clothes or they needed a house then she would invite them to stay at her house um, you know if it was food she'd bring food for them whatever it was so she was basically meeting those needs and showing them Jesus um, just through those simple things. There was something else that happened really significant in her life that um, became really important when it came to healing and seeing people literally there were oh, two. Oh yeah, she started speaking in tongues. Um, well, somebody somebody introduced her. She was actually Ang Anglican and come from England. But she... Um, so Actually, really quick, what's the story? We'll come back to that. What was the story on her, how she ended up there? How she, how she ended up in Hong Kong? Yeah. Well, she um, basically felt the Lord telling her to go. Yeah, she asked the Lord what she should do, and she, the Lord told her, go. But then she didn't know where to go. And then in the end, um, well, she had a dream, and she, she saw the words Hong Kong, and she thought it was in Africa. She actually didn't know where it was. And then um, she talked to a minister and the minister told her to book the cheapest boat with the most um, ports that it's stopping at and just ask the Lord which port to get off at. 
so then she actually barely made it into Hong Kong but she got on got off at Hong Kong and the rest is history as they say so so she she met some people there some Chinese people and through them she got baptized in the Holy Spirit yeah but it, it had an impact but kind of not and so then she met a American American. He challenged her to, to pray in tongues every day for 15 minutes at least. Right. So that's where she started and then um, she noticed that when she got a chance like she was um, she was teaching as well in, in Kowloon. She um, go out on the streets and she noticed that when she had a conversation before she was just it was like nothing they were uh, what's that to do with me but then when she started praying in tongues, she noticed that when she went to somebody, it was like they were already prepared and ready mm. to receive the gospel. And they wanted the gospel. Mm. And they understood it. She said before, they weren't understanding it. And that took about four years before she started seeing the real breakthroughs happening yeah. as well. Yeah, it took about four years before Yeah, she started really um, the, the triads, which are like the gangs in... In Hong Kong, she made a big impact into their lives. Basically, what I think happened is that the Wall City, which is which was really out of the bounds of government, there was no governing body there. They could do anything they wanted, so there was all kinds of vice and drugs and all stuff going on there. I mean, she basically collapsed that whole system. I think that's the reason that Wall City does not exist today is as a result of what happened to that mm. spiritually. Now this is not to take away from because I mean we're all in different places and at different times and gosh I mean I'm growing in my faith too we're growing in our faith and we're spending more time in the word but there were people who were working with drug addicts and they tended to use two things either they used they used uh, other drugs to help people get off the drugs or they they did the cold turkey. They kind of did it that sweated way. It they sweated it out. And uh, not saying anything about, about either of those. But she tapped into something where her people were miraculously healed. They miraculously came off, off the drugs. Yeah, the first guy, the first guy, she, she said it was a heroin addict for, uh, I don't know, was it 20 years or something? She said he just miraculously got delivered um, within about 10 minutes. Wow. He started praying in tongues and he was just, wow. he was just delivered. Now, so there was something that, that they did, they did, and they were just kept seeing people delivered and delivered without using yeah. drugs or going cold turkey. And, and you seen it in action when you were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And basically they, they put somebody with somebody and they look after their personal needs and they pray in tongues the whole time mm -hmm. until they come through. Yeah. So basically they could be with them 24 hours, 48 hours, yeah. and they always have somebody assigned and they just pray in tongues nonstop until the breakthrough comes. Yeah, well they found the biggest breakthrough was when the, the gang member started participating in the prayers himself. Right, he, so when they started he, speaking in tongues. Yeah, when he would speak out, even if he even if he spoke out in his English, or it's not English, it is Chinese, <laughs> his local language, and he, when he cried out and asked, oh Lord, help me, then he would see the breakthrough. When they were quiet and didn't say anything, or too shy to say something, then it was prolonged. I mean, we're learning this in our own lives, you know, I mean, I... I've always prayed a lot, but I've done a lot in my head. And about five or six months ago, God started speaking to me like, I need you to start opening your mouth more. I mean, I pray in public, but just praying out loud. And I prayed in tongues, definitely, but to increase that. But to be making declarations, to praying out the word of God, to speaking forth things. I think we've been doing a lot more of that. You see that with them, the the 70 year prophecy, that there were people that prayed it out. And then there's power in words. I mean, scripture talks about... Is it in Romans again as well, where Abraham, or God, about speaking things that are not as though they are? Four. Romans 4. And so, you know, some people would think, oh, this is weird or new age or, you know, but there's power in words. We know that in the beginning, God created. 
the heavens and the earth with a spoken word. And there's all kinds of scientific things about, you know, words and how they're floating in the air and they discover radio channels in space that were played like decades ago and they're still floating around and that we'd be held accountable for our words and Proverbs talks a lot about the power of our words. In fact, even reading the other day ago that we'll be locked by what we say. So if you make a vow that you shouldn't make, go ask if you could be released from it because that vow will bind you. And you know, snared by, snare by, yeah, snare by the words of your mouth. And it talks about as well that you'll have basically what you speak. You know, and it talks about that in Proverbs. And sometimes as Christians, we just, we say a lot of stuff. The whole book of James talks about good fountain, bad fountain, the power of the tongue. And I think it's an area where, but so obviously when they started speaking it, bringing it all together, when they started speaking it out, um, it increased the process, sped it up. And, you know, we say, well, God is, is, is sovereign or God's in control. God, you know, everything. But God really works with us, doesn't he? And there are things that are happening and not happening because we keep our mouth shut. That's so, right. well, that's good. Anything else that you think about her story that you've read or stands out or, I mean, how even to rebuild your own life and ministry or just, you know, is there things that stick out to you? I mean, obviously highlighting the part about speaking, holding on to the promises of God, believing them, speaking them out. What's the scripture that you memorized about uh, stagger not? Oh, Abraham. Yes. What? Abraham's. Uh, well, that's in Romans. That's in the, Romans. Chapter. Yes. That's in chapter he four as well. not his own body, which is good as dead, or the, or the womb of Sarah. Um, stagger not at the promises of God, but grew strong in faith and glorified God. Fully persuaded or fully convinced that mm -hmm. what God said he would do mm -hmm. yeah that's that's definitely powerful scripture and you know just thinking about yeah cons don't you don't consider you don't consider your circumstances yeah. you don't you don't give it time you don't you don't ask questions about it you just keep your eyes fixed on what God is saying, what He has said, He is going to be faithful to His word. And you know, you go through hell or high water, you believe in that God's mm. God's word is is more real than mm. the world we are living in. That's right. It's good. That, that we have to be convinced of that. That whatever we see with our eyes, if it's sickness, disease, whatever it is, in poverty, poverty, we don't we don't dwell on. It. We say no. We are we are victorious. We're overcomers. That's right. We're the head, we not the tail. The word of God. That's right. And that's where you find the scripture to, to, to back. I, I think because there's been some excesses and extremes in the faith movement, people have really come against some of that. But when you start reading the word and seeing what it says, there's a lot of a lot of powerful stuff there. It's almost like there in response to that, there's been an unbelief movement created. You know, it's kinda like, you know, when we used Realism. to pass huh? Realism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to be realistic. Real, yeah. We're just being real. And that's a real thing in our generation about, you know, how are you feeling, being honest about what you're feeling. And I, I, God started showing me, you know what, you if you're going to talk like that, you're going to live in that place, you know. And how many prayers do we nullify? We're saying something to God and then we go and we talk negative or bad about people or, or all this stuff, you yeah, know. Jackie Pollinger was saying yesterday, we were listening to her and she was saying, the teams that are coming in, all the teenagers, and then how they're fighting with each other, and, and they're saying it's spiritual warfare. And she says, it's not spiritual warfare. Yeah. It's carnality. It's just, yeah. It's carnality. Or learning to, to walk through relationships. Yeah, it's not the not, devil. It's yeah. you, actually. Yeah, you're not willing to yeah. work in a team. That's right. And that's some of it when we go, you know, the, the the flesh and carnality, it's in the New Testament, are very similar. So when we keep going, this is how I feel in my flesh. These are what my senses are telling me. Basically, we're saying carnal nature saying or the carnality part that was crucified at the cross. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm living in the carnal nature. But he says, you know, it talks about in Romans, you know, we're referencing Romans a bit live carnally minded is death and I don't think he's yes there's a spiritual death in eternity but he's talking about the here too you know that we we miss out we miss out on what God has when we're living after the flesh and so it's it's gonna take a lot with all the super senses and, and social media 
And I want this really quickly for a generation to be able to be like, man, I'm going to take hold of the word of God. It's going to mean more to me than, than anything else. And I suppose that's, that's what we're digging in more for. Amen. Amen. So anyways, that's the beginning part. Just looking at uh, looking at this whole thing about what does it mean to see your life rebuilt. The word has got to be in there. The word that God's speaking. Um, but I think one important thing too is that God wants to rebuild. You gotta you know God wants to rebuild your life. And uh, just because it's fresh, that message that we were listening to was great. She was saying if you're 80 years old, you know um, you're still you know God's still got a portion for you. And sometimes we think we've missed it or we're living carnally or we've missed our opportunities. But uh, as I've heard people say before as well, if you're breathing, there's still opportunities. And um, and so we just just take the time, dig in, you know, don't give up. Put the hours in if that's what it takes, not in a legalistic way, earning something from God. You're not going to change God by spending a lot of time in the word and in prayer. It changes you and lines you up with God. So it's not legalistic, uh, unless you're doing it to try to twist God's arm, and then it doesn't work. Um, but at the same time, it's also necessary. We could get so like, well, I'm saved by grace, I don't have to do anything. And that's just a lie from the pit of hell as well. Uh, that's not true, that's deception. And so, um, you know, if we wanna go closer as a couple, we gotta hang out, right? right. Like going to pick apples right now. <laughs> All right, so thanks and again pass it on like uh, like it subscribe and uh, have a great day and uh, we will go out and uh, spend some time with the Lord uh, go out in nature and spend some time with someone you love God bless you bye